Okay, so Brian's running. He's doing it. He's getting it done. Uh, he wins the, the vote to be the head of the Populist Party, but he also becomes so popular, he ends up being the nominee for the Democrats, too. So he's, he's from one of the two major parties. Uh, I, I very much liken it to kind of what you're seeing today with Bernie Sanders. Uh, maybe even Elizabeth Warren, where it's like there's this populist person, uh, a very progressive person. They're not really a Democrat, but they're they're so in tune with the voters. They they may end up winning the Democratic nominee just because they're so in tune with the same message that most Democratic voters are looking to to have appeal to. Uh, so he's only 36, and he's looking like this is going to be our next president, right? He's just got this great gift for speaking. Uh, the Republicans run this guy named William McKinley. Now, he is not a big speaker. Uh, he's running against free coinage. He wants to keep up the gold standard. But here's where the big difference is. He is backed by the, the big corporations, right? Because remember, they, they like money being tied to the gold standard because they have all the gold. So Brian goes around and he's just touring the country, right? He's speaking in all these engagements. gives like 30 speeches. And McKinley doesn't even, he doesn't even campaign. He sits on his butt, sits at home, and he lets the campaign uh, really be run by the corporations. And they start spreading that fear. Oh, man, if you elect William Jennings Bryan, everything is just going to go belly up. It's all going to be chaos. Nothing good is going to happen. They really focus on saying, look, if this inflation happens, the, all the, the regular workers that work in the cities that aren't farmers, uh, they're going to end up losing their jobs, right? It, that inflation, it's it's going to help the farmers, but it's going to hurt them. And it really, they kind of shift the argument to being uh, the labor versus the corporations to being kind of what we see today, right? The the city worker versus the the farmer. And they kind of shift the argument. And, of course, you know, there's more people living in, even back then, there's more people living in the cities than there are on farms. And so uh, it starts shifting this focus and creates a rural versus urban situation. And, of course, obviously, the the rural people just lose out, right? Uh, the, they can't keep up with the sheer volume of people in the big cities. So he loses. Uh, but one of the things, though, and, and I'm going to show you the video on the next slide. You're going to see a city, uh, this video from Bernie Sanders. Uh, and the thing I want you to understand is even today, this populist idea, it still exists. Uh, this progressivism. Uh, it's the reason why we have a uh, weekends. It's the reason you get off for holidays and maternity leave. And the reason you get paid vacations. And a lot of that stuff, it all comes out of that progressive movement. People fighting for workers, fighting for their rights against these giant corporations. And I'm going to show you a clip of uh, Bernie Sanders, who's kind of a modern, most people say he's kind of the... the central figurehead for the progressives these days. So uh, watch this video and then climb to the top. 